If you're struggling to get your LinkedIn post seen by more people so you can get more engagement and boost your brand, I figured out a way to get 1000% better results, literally. Even though I'm posting the same amount this year as last year, my engagements are up 1000% and my impressions are up 1200%. Okay, so what changed? I created a strategy where I stopped trying to hack the algorithm and started to understand it. When we get to know the psychology and the motives behind the algorithm, when we get to know it personally, that's when the algorithm loves us. So let's see how you can get more personal with the LinkedIn algorithm so you can get seen by more LinkedIn users, get more engagement and get more customers. But first, what do I mean by hacking the algorithm? Because we have to get out of that. Hacking is anytime we try to game the system. You know, click this button, type in these hashtags, use this post format, and boom, instant LinkedIn fame. Well, actually that doesn't really happen and that's the problem. But still, I know how tempting a hack can be because hacks are like shortcuts, right? And if you're a regular to this channel, you know about my character, social media hack woman. She has been off duty for some time and I'm probably bringing her back, but as a super villain. Stay tuned. Okay, so we're gonna push hacking aside and start understanding the algorithm and understanding the motives and the psychology. And a super important thing to understand is why does LinkedIn even use an algorithm? Think of the algorithm as a decision tree that helps LinkedIn figure out which content is delivered to which users. Now, LinkedIn wants to be picky with this because LinkedIn wants its users to be happy. Happy users are more likely to invest in paid advertising and premium accounts and LinkedIn learning and all the things that bring LinkedIn money. I just banged my elbow. Now, what I find fascinating about the LinkedIn algorithm or decision tree is that it really does pick out better content for us than if we were to see every single post from everyone we follow. And you can actually witness this firsthand. When you change your newsfeed from top, which is the default view and shows only the posts that LinkedIn handpicks for us and change it to recent, which shows all the most recent posts in reverse chronological order, regardless of whether these posts are any good. My recent newsfeed is just horrible. I'm going to protect the guilty by not showing you who is posting what here. But definitely check out your own newsfeed and let me know in the comments what your experience is like looking at top versus recent. Okay, so now let's say you're the one posting. How do you know what LinkedIn is looking for and why? So when you craft your content and you press that magic post button, LinkedIn needs to figure out if your post is one of three things. Spam, low quality, or clear, which honestly I call high quality because that makes a whole lot more sense. And I'm going to use the terms clear and high quality interchangeably because this is my video. Okay, let's start with spam. LinkedIn will weed out the spam because no one likes spam. Now, I know that there are some of you who are going to be saying, Duh, Brooke, I don't post spam. Okay, it's time for some rookie tough love. When we put a post out there, sometimes what we think is non-spammy can look spammy to other people and to LinkedIn. There are several things that'll make LinkedIn flag your post as spam. First is if you use poor spelling or grammar. LinkedIn needs to know you're credible. I know some of you are gonna get mad at me, but here's the hard truth. If you're prone to typos, you're making it harder for people to trust you professionally. And some people will flat out notice the typos. Other people will just process it subconsciously. If you need help with this, just ask for a second set of eyes to look at your post before they go out. LinkedIn can also flag your post as spam if you use multiple links in the same post. It's like saying, click here and here and here. LinkedIn is trying to protect its users from pushiness. We'll also be flagged if we flat out ask people to like, comment, or repost, i.e. share in the post. And that includes using hashtags like hashtag like, hashtag comment, hashtag repost. LinkedIn sees you're trying to force engagement and basically game the system and they won't stand for it. Now there are ways to encourage engagement without being flagged. And we're going to talk about that later in this video. So stay tuned. Another thing about hashtags, if you use a ton of them, LinkedIn can mark you as spam. It again, looks like you're trying to game the system besides the fact that hashtags are ugly. If you want to use hashtags because they can work for you, if you know how to use them wisely, limit them to about three to five. Now I actually have a whole video about how to use hashtags on LinkedIn the right way. And I'll include a link in the description. You'll also be marked for spam if you tag a zillion people in your post. Again, LinkedIn is just trying to protect its users. And you may have experienced this from the other end. It is so annoying when someone tags you in a post that you have nothing to do with. And now you have to stop what you're doing so you can give that post that attention to help out that person. And then you may even have to comment on the post, which you don't really have time for. You didn't ask for any of this. If you're going to tag people in a post, limit it to five people and that's at most. 
But note that even if your post gets through the spam filter, okay, and it's out there, if there are some people that you tagged that don't respond to the post, LinkedIn will decide to slow down the growth of your post because it interprets the non-response of some of the tagged people as you annoying them. So be super, super careful with tagging. And there's one more way you could be flagged as spam even if you get through the initial spam filter. And that's if people mark your content as I don't wanna see this, unfollow the person or report this post. So we covered spam, so now how does the algorithm tell the difference between low quality content, which is delivered to very few news feeds, and clear or high quality content, which is delivered to more news feeds. Now it's important to understand that with either low quality or high quality posts, LinkedIn will send your post at first to a fraction or a subset of your connections. And if the post performs well, it's getting engagement, and we're gonna be talking about all this, then your post will be delivered to even more connections. So for that reason, we're gonna see that some of the differences between low quality content and high quality content can be determined by LinkedIn's AI before the post goes out. Other differences will be determined after the post goes out and it shows how it's performing. Okay, so here's what LinkedIn looks for all together. First is recency. The newer your post is or the more recently someone has engaged with your post, the more likely your post is to be delivered to other news feeds. And related to recency is how much time has passed between the post you just put out and the post you did before that. LinkedIn likes it when there's some breathing room between posts because they don't want you to bombard its users. Now different sources out there will give you completely different recommendations on how much time you should wait between posts. Personally, I would wait at least 24 hours. Next is relevance and specifically how relevant your post is to a specific audience. That's because LinkedIn users are busy. They just want to see the posts that matter to them. That's it. So niche down and the more niche your posts are. I don't know if niche is a word. I will look it up later the more easily LinkedIn can index your posts so they're delivered to just the right people. LinkedIn is also looking for your expertise in a topic because LinkedIn wants to deliver content from the best sources. So how do you show LinkedIn you're an expert? Well, one way is to make sure that the concepts and the keywords that are in your LinkedIn profile match the concepts and the keywords that you're putting in your posts. Also, when it's appropriate, be opinionated in your posts or show a unique perspective. LinkedIn's gonna assume you're taking a certain angle because you're an expert. But on LinkedIn, it's not just what you know, but whom you know, because LinkedIn is now prioritizing content so it's delivered to your personal connections. You might remember that in the not too distant past, LinkedIn was pushing out a bunch of content from mega influencers. It turns out LinkedIn users did not like this. They really just wanted to see posts from the people they know, in other words, their connections. So LinkedIn's like, okay. So if you want your posts seen by more people, keep building your network and be sure to connect with people strategically who would probably really enjoy your content and also engage with your network because interactions also signal to LinkedIn that you guys must know each other and should see each other's content. Now the decision tree also looks at your SSI score, which is social selling index. And the social selling index basically rates your activity on LinkedIn. If you have a high SSI score, I've heard if it's 70 or above, LinkedIn will deliver your post to even more news feeds. And that's because LinkedIn wants to reward good behavior. And if you want to learn more about LinkedIn SSI, I have a whole video about it. I'll include a link in the description. LinkedIn also wants to see that your post has value. In other words, you're sharing your expertise in the post itself rather than just hinting at the fact that people will get value and see your expertise once they hire you. No one likes to be sold to. Now, every once in a while, it's okay to have a sales message out there, but please understand that post is not going to get as far. Now, if you've been reluctant to pretty much give away the farm as your marketing strategy. I've been using this marketing strategy for quite a long time. It's been doing wonders for growing my business. And it feels good knowing that I'm putting some good out there. And of course, if someone wants more customized help, then they can hire me. And there's even more that the LinkedIn algorithm looks for. I'm gonna put this under the category of post setup. In other words, how the message is crafted. First with setup, let's talk about the length of the post. If you are regular to this channel, you know that I love short posts. You know, the caption is a sentence or two, maybe a paragraph if needed. Shorter posts are easier to write, meaning it's way easier to stay consistent with those types of posts. And for the people receiving your posts, they're way easier to read. It saves them time. And honestly, when you see a post that's paragraphs and paragraphs long, do you read the whole thing? 99% of the time, people just skim these types of posts. However, the LinkedIn algorithm sees things differently. And I'm trying to come to terms with this because again, I'm trying to understand it and put myself in its shoes. Posts that are at least a thousand-ish characters or more are gonna be favored by LinkedIn. 
LinkedIn probably likes longer posts because if you have a lot of text, that probably means you have more chance to educate people. So definitely try it out. But I will tell you that if you find that writing really long posts several times a week is unsustainable, and as a matter of fact, it might even stop you in your tracks from posting on LinkedIn at all, I grant you permission to write shorter posts just so you can stay consistent and show up at the party. Because remember, 90% of success is showing up. Also, look at your language. You may have a longer post, but LinkedIn wants to see you're using shorter words, shorter sentences, shorter paragraphs with line breaks in between. So it's just easier to read. Human brains, no matter how smart they are, crave simplicity. Now I know on LinkedIn, because I hear this a lot, that it's tempting to try to use big words and sound all formal to be more impressive. But that marketing strategy, whether in LinkedIn or out, typically backfires. You can communicate simply and be professional at the same time. Also in your post, try avoid adding an external link. In other words, a link that takes people off of LinkedIn because LinkedIn wants to keep people on LinkedIn. Now I will tell you that I still use external links quite a bit. They do help me stay consistent because those types of posts are easier to craft. So don't feel like you have to avoid external links altogether. Just try to lean away from them a bit. Now you might hear the hack that you can put the external link in the comment and LinkedIn won't know. I have seen this a lot. My hunch is that LinkedIn still sees it. I know that Facebook picks up on that hack. So I wouldn't put it past LinkedIn's AI to pick it up as well. Now, once your post is out there, LinkedIn is going to monitor your engagement to see how many news feeds it should continue going to. And there's a lot to talk about here. So brace yourself. First of all, of course, LinkedIn wants to see likes, comments, and reposts, but they want to see those likes, comments, and reposts from people who have a history on LinkedIn as being interested in the topic you're posting about. This is important to LinkedIn because LinkedIn is trying to fight against what some people do to try to hack the system, which is use engagement pods. Engagement pods are where you have a group of people mutually agree to like and comment on each other's posts when these posts come out to basically boost the engagement numbers. But if people in a pod usually are not really interested in each other's posts. So if they click on like, it's an empty gesture. If they comment, it's an empty gesture. And it's usually something stupid like cool or great post. So that's why LinkedIn now looks for meaningful comments on your post. In other words, longer comments on your post. Because if someone's writing a longer comment, chances are they are actually somehow emotionally invested <laughs> in what you wrote. Now I've heard that LinkedIn notices comments when they're at least 12 words long. I don't know if 12 is the exact number. And really you can't force people to write comments that are 12 words or more, but you get an idea for the length that LinkedIn is looking at. Also with engagement, LinkedIn is looking for the user's dwell time. In other words, how much time do they spend reading or watching or interacting with your post? The longer they spend on your post, the more interesting your post must be. In other words, then it should be delivered to even more news feeds. This all leads to one big question. How do you get people to engage with your post, post meaningful comments and spend more time on your post without flat out asking them to do that, which puts you at risk for being flagged as spam. There are a few things you can do. First of all, make sure that the first sentence of your caption or the first few seconds of your video grab people's attention. You can lead with an interesting statistic or an intriguing question or anything else that blows people's minds. People won't engage with you unless they stick with you. And by the way, the LinkedIn algorithm will especially love you if people happen to click on see more to see the full post because that signals that you've hooked your readers. Also to get more engagement, somewhere in the post, ask an open-ended question. For example, if I were writing a long LinkedIn post about the LinkedIn algorithm that we're talking about right now, I might ask something like, what's worked for you to get more reach and engagement on LinkedIn? It can be simple. Now, as far as imagery, consider using a selfie and it can pair nicely if you're having a post with text with a lot of advice. Posts with selfies get about three times more engagement because people want to see the face behind the post. But please don't overdo it because that can get old. And I think we all know people who put a selfie with every single post and you wish sometimes you just saw something different. You also want to be mindful of your post format. Now, usually LinkedIn is not going to screen your post in advance based on the format, whether it's a PDF or a video or anything like that. But certain formats tend to get better engagement, meaning you're more likely to be delivered to more and more news feeds. The most successful formats tend to be those PDF document carousels, text with or without a single image, and native video, in other words, video uploaded directly onto LinkedIn. Also, newsletters, articles, and polls 
tend to perform well. Not performing as well are posts with an external link, which actually is pre-screened like I mentioned earlier, and posts with multiple images because the human brain prefers seeing a single image. But I will tell you, your best bet is to still have a mix of different formats just to keep it interesting for your audience and your overall brand. And then just lean a little bit more towards the types of posts that are more likely to get more engagement. Also, whenever there's a new post format that LinkedIn comes out with, try to be an early adopter because LinkedIn is actually trying to promote that format and have more people see it. So you can kind of ride that wave. Now, LinkedIn isn't going to monitor your engagement forever because it has to process more than 2 million posts and articles and videos every single day. So LinkedIn's attention on any one post is primarily in what's called the golden hour. In other words, the first 60 minutes that a post comes out. So how do we make the most of the golden hour? First, when someone comments on your post, do your very best to respond right away. Now, this isn't always going to be possible. You're busy, but at least if you're putting a post out there that's super, super important, be mindful of that golden hour so you can be on alert. And the other thing is to try to publish your posts when your audience is most likely to be online. And I have a video that shows you the best times to post on LinkedIn, and you may be surprised of what those times are. So check out this video in the top right corner. Thank you so much and see you in the next video.